I can't tell you how much thinking you should be doing versus how much listening you should be doing. And it shouldn't be versus, they're kind of, they go together, mm -hmm. right? But it's the listening that you want to develop. Before you walk out on stage, you say, okay, I am going to center myself and I'm going to listen. And I have, for myself, you know, I sort of develop this thing when I walk out on stage, I imagine myself that my ears grow very, very large. <laughs> this is true, I actually was. And then those ears are like vacuum cleaners and they get suction. <laughs> and they start gobbling up all the sound so that no sound can get away from them. If the ears are really controlling what's, what you're doing here and you're well trained and you're prepared, you don't have to think that much. The brain hovers around, it's there if we need it. And I know, for example, some of it's pre-planned. I'll go out on stage and I'll say, okay, when I come to this shift, I'm gonna remind myself to bring my elbow up. I actually will pre-plan something like that. But basically, I try and get to myself to the point that I can just go out there without a lot of conscious thought. I've definitely walked off stage many, many, many times. And I can't actually remember what happened. And then, but there's something inside that's just like, it was great. People are so nervous, they kind of block out, black out and they don't, think and they don't feel and they don't hear. That can, can be a disastrous situation also, but what I'm talking about, and I think you're talking about too, it's a place that you can go on stage and in performance where your senses are more aware, where your listening is keener, you know, where your feelings, where your connection to the cello is, is more intense than than just kind of this day-to-day -day reality where we're sitting here and talking about it.